Article 43. On, the, on petition of Mary Louise Woolsey and at least 25 other registered voters to see if the town will vote to direct the Board of Selectmen to discontinue all public collection of condominium, commercial, and retail waste, trash, and recycling no later than September 15, 2014, not recommended by the Board of Selectmen, 4 to 1 to 0. Is there a motion to open discussion on Article 43? Moved by Ms. Woolsey. Is there a second? Seconded by Mr. Pluff. Ms. Woolsey, would, like you, would you like to speak to your petition article? Yes, thank you, Mr. Moderator. It's time to bring some consistency in town. This is an article that refers to all of the condominium, commercial, and retail enter enterprises in the entire town. This is not directed at the beach. Probably about half of our businesses in town uh, dispose of their own waste. They pay to get rid of their own waste. We have had a lot of inconsistencies in the activities of the planning board who have directed one condominium or another to dispose of their own waste and then they direct or don't direct other condominiums at all so they put their waste out for public collection. We have a Department of Public Works at this point in time that is overwhelmed with waste particularly since the recycling uh, provisions for curbside mandatory recycling went into effect. We cannot continue the burden of trash that we pick up in this town. I think it's patently unfair because this is a fairness issue to expect the town taxpayers, you were just talking about this with regard to the Fisher House uh, article, it's not fair to expect the town taxpayers to pay for commercial waste, retail waste, or condominium waste. Uh, the commercial and retail are making a profit, I hope, and we hope they're thriving. But I don't make any money on my house, and I think it's about time to get us all on the same track. Besides which, the entities which already pay and have already paid for years, like Hannaford, like the Galley Hatch, I won't name a whole list of them, they get no tax break. They're subsidizing other businesses, and I don't think they need to do that. I think this is a huge fairness issue. I also think, I, I have heard, and I, I mentioned this briefly, I think, to Commissioner Rage uh, at the fire station ribbon cutting, you hear horror stories about how the beach will be awash with trash and rats. Uh, I recall the uh, article in the patch on the 4th of July this past year that said that the condition of the beach was in bad shape on 4th of July morning and beach residents, not even businessmen, but beach residents ran out of their property with their waste collection bags and were picking up trash on the beach. I don't believe for a minute that the businesses at Hampton Beach or anywhere else in town will allow their property to be awash with trash. I think that's a scare tactic. I think it's unfair to the public. I will say that it's time, particularly at the beach, for the landlords to step up to the plate and start monitoring their establishments, especially when we're getting a complaint from a nice lady on F Street that the uh, carts that are put outside on the sidewalk are filled up in two days with beer cans and beer bottles falling all over the street. There's got to be a better way to keep this town clean. There's got to be better accountability. And we have got to get the load off the backs of public works. If you expect to see any other services in this town, like maintaining the highways, trimming trees and bushes out of the way at the uh, at tree street intersections, putting up signs like the no through traffic signs, there are a million jobs that Public Works needs to be doing, and we're spending way, way too much time on picking up trash. It's time to stop it. There are, are options. There are private vendors that will be happy to come in and help and negotiate to take care of the waste. And it's about time waste disposal went on the balance sheets of the businesses in this community. Because otherwise, I am considering seriously asking the town meeting next year to start forking over some pretty fat tax credits to the businesses that pay to get rid of their own waste. We've got to start being fair. We've got to be even. We've got to look out for the interests of the taxpayer. I don't think I need to be paying to dispose of any commercial waste at all. So I think it's time to do this. Once we take a deep breath and get it done, I know the Ashworth uh, has gone ahead and hired a private hauler. Don't forget, 
the businesses have the right to go to the transfer station, transport their own waste, and pay for it because there is a fee for commercial waste disposal. No fee for recycling disposal. So there are options, and all we are required to do by statute as a community is to provide a place to dispose of trash. We have no obligation whatsoever to pick up trash at all. And I believe there are very few communities, and Mr. Welch can probably speak to that, very few communities in the state of New Hampshire that subsidize commercial entities by picking up the waste. We have got to streamline, we have got to get the burden off the backs of the Public Works Department because I don't know what we're going to be doing pretty soon, but if you want to spend 100% of Public Works time picking up trash, I, I don't know what to tell you, but I think this is important. I think we need to do it now. Once it's done, over with, everybody will settle down. They have the whole summer to work this out. Then I think we'll all be on a good track and can move forward. Thank you, Ms. Wolsey. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Mr. Rage. Yeah, Chuck Rage, 121 Ocean Boulevard. Every few years we seem to talk trash in this town. Um, I'd like to make an amendment, and the reason I want to make an amendment is I don't think this whole article has been thought out. I don't think it has been studied. Uh, I don't think the numbers are there. And the amendment, I'd, the amendment I'd like to make is to see if the town will vote to direct the Board of Selectmen to study whether to discontinue all public collection of condominium, commercial, and retail waste, trash and recycling no later than September 15, 2014, with the report to be made at the next selectman meeting following September 15th deadline. That's Thank you, Mr. Rage. Is there a uh, second to that? Um, Mr. Nyan is a second. Do I have that right? And I apologize for my back. So moved by Mr. Rage, seconded by Mr. Nyan. My ruling is that does not change the subject matter of the article. Um, I will say, if I can finish, please. I will say that whenever the body amends anything in today's uh, climate, that there is a risk that a court could rule the um, amendment uh, improper. But I've looked at the law as it pertains to amendments to study an article, and there is no definitive guidance on that. So I look to the issue as to whether, with Mr. Rage's amendment, the subject matter has remained the same, and it is still talking about discontinuing public collection. Intent is not the test, it's subject matter, and because of that, that's my ruling. As I said at the outset of the meeting, this is your meeting and you can overrule my rulings. But at this juncture, my ruling is that that's a proper amendment. And if somebody wants to challenge that, this is the time to do it. Otherwise, excuse me, let me finish. Otherwise, we'll proceed with discussion on Mr. Rage's amendment. I've heard, although I'm gonna have him come to the uh, microphone, I've heard Mr. Jones assert a challenge. I'd like to have somebody second Mr. Jones' challenge. Got a second in the back row. I need to have your name. Did you get that? Okay. I guess if Mr. Jones, you could come forward. The other fellow, she didn't hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. Glenn Farrell. Glenn Farrell, address? Okay. Yes. Okay. So we're going to take a vote of the body on Mr. Jones's challenge. So if you don't want to permit Mr. Rage's amendment to be considered, you think it's an improper amendment, then you've challenged my ruling, which is that it's a proper amendment, but you have the right to overrule that, and that's what the vote is. So if you vote yes, you're overruling the moderator, and we're not going to entertain Mr. Um, Rage's motion. If you vote no, then you've sustained my ruling, and we're going to go forward and, and hear about Mr. Rage's amendment and ultimately have a vote on Mr. Rage's amendment, and it may pass or not pass, and then we'll get back to the main motion. So to the challenge to the moderator, Mr. Jones's challenge, all those in favor, no, no, this is a procedural motion. Why am I here? All those in favor of um, Mr. Jones's procedural challenge to the moderator, raise your voter card. Down cards. 
Okay. All those opposed, raise your voter card. So the moderator's ruling has been upheld. Mr. Rage, you can speak to your amendment if you have anything further, and then all that come after you will be speaking to your amendment, why you think it should be a study. Well, there seems to be a, a, a long line of people behind me, so I'll be brief. Um, the reason that I wanted to put this to a study is I, feel, I have confidence in this board or any future board that will do the right thing for the town of Hampton as a whole. And um, I, I think that by giving them the opportunity to study this, to figure out where the costs will be, I, I, I don't know if people are thinking about the long lines that will be at the transfer station um, because of, ha of businesses having to bring um, their trash to the, to the dump on their own. I don't, you know, the traffic backed up on Tidemore Road as well as as, as, as Harats Way. I also, um, I don't think that they're looking at the cost of having to build or add on to the current transfer station. Right now we have a very small transfer station. If you compare it to other towns that, that don't do trash pickup, they have much larger facilities. So if we're looking at spending, if we, are we going to come back next year and look for a million or two million dollars? This town seems to spend a lot of money building buildings. Um, and I, I'd, I'd hate to see us spend more money than we're actually going to save. Nobody has told me how much we will save by eliminating uh, trash pickup. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Rage. Yes, sir. Bob Ladd. Bob Ladd on the Rage Amendment. Correct. 7 Cutler Avenue, Pr Village Precinct Commissioner. Uh, in addition to what Chuck has said, I would like to drill down into what the term commercial means. And I would suggest it's far more than what meets the eye. It's much more than a business normally you would walk into if you are running out of a, a business out of your home, you're a commercial enterprise. If you take a federal tax deduction for a home office, you're a commercial enterprise. If you are running a daycare center, you are a commercial enterprise. If you are a landlord renting properties, you are a commercial enterprise. This goes on and on. This is not about a few <coughs> obvious businesses, this is about an enormous subset of the community. There are 2,685 residential condominium units in Hampton. In yesterday's Hampton Union, the Public Works Director was quoted as saying, I can't identify which ones we pick trash up for and which ones we don't. In any event, do the math. The transfer hour stations are 8 to 3. Anyone who works can't be there after 8 or before 3 during the week. The, <clears throat> the reality is we should be one community. We should care about each other. We should not have a few saying, let's take away services from the many while continuing services for them. It is correct that under New Hampshire law, you don't have to pick up anybody, anybody's rubbish. If this article is to pass, why wouldn't the people whose rubbish is no longer being picked up file an article next year to take away everybody's rubbish pickup? There's nowhere to go with this that isn't detrimental to the town. Further, we were told at the Budget Committee by the DPW director, it would cost a minimum of $100,000 to equip the packers with readers and software systems to identify the trash which is to be picked up. I don't know how you say to a single driver of a packer truck, I'm going to give you a list of hundreds, potentially thousands of units of residency that you're not to pick up trash in. How does he go down a street and identify that there are two family houses, two now single family condominium units? How is the deed recorded in the assessor's office to your property? If it is recorded as a commercial owned property, would you continue to get your trash picked up? These things have to be sorted out. This is why we support the amendment so it can go back for study and review. A couple of years ago, we started up a street where we spent a lot of money to buy packer trucks and tens of thousands of carts to try a new program. It seems to me 
we should work on making that program work better. And finally, there's been a lot of discussion today about recycling. This is a very anti-recycling sort of article. If you won't pick up my trash, you have disincented me to cooperate in the recycling process in this town. Finally, how do we address the disabled people who under no condition could get their trash to the dump? I don't know what the answer to that is. I don't know if it would be violative of the Americans with Disability Act. I do know this. When you discriminate against a very large subset of the community, you ultimately are discriminating against the whole community. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ladd. Mr. Rice. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Fred Rice, 15 Heather Lane. <clears throat> I'm opposed to this amendment. The reason is uh, we've, got a plan, we've got a question before us that says simply let's discontinue all commercial condominium and retail waste. No definition of what that means. No definition of anything in there. There's not a complete plan. To give the Board of Selectmen as presently constituted, six more months, we know that we're going to do nothing between now and the election. We know that when the election comes, there is likely to be either some change or maybe even a lot of change in the Board of Selectmen, which may change the entire face of the board. It may change the attitude of the board. And then they won't do, they, there isn't really enough time to do anything before summer, and then it's summertime. No, we don't really do an awful lot during this. Oh, we've got a deadline on September 15th, the same weekend as the seafood festival when all this stuff is going on. I'm sorry, just giving another six months to a board that has had five or ten years. I know I've been coming before the Board of Selectmen for the last ten years to try to get a sensible plan, and to give them another six months after they've come up with this thing is ludicrous. This, this is not going to do anything. When we speak about the main, the main uh, uh, ward article, uh, I'll address some of the specific issues, but right now, just giving them more time to stretch out doing nothing or not coming up with it, this is a bad plan. And this is a bad plan, in my estimation, and I think that giving them six more months to refine a bad plan is going to probably give us a worse plan. So let's, just, let's kill the amendment and come back and discuss the main article, which we should also drive a stake in the heart of as well. Thank you. Mr. Rainier, on the Rage Amendment, please. Richard Rainier, 29 Highland Ave. Uh, Mr. Moderator, I came here tonight to, to address uh, the article as the way it was presented and to make my comments on that. Now, whether or not we're talking about a, uh, the portion of the article that says discontinue or whether to study whether to discontinue, I would uh, ask the uh, moderator for me to allow to make my comments. I'm going to ask you to keep it to the amendment, which is whether you think this is an appropriate thing to study or not. That's really the issue of the amendment. And as Mr. Well, Rice said, we're going to, to we're going to deal with that amendment in, in shortly and, and uh, see where that takes. You're saying I have to address my comments to whether I feel it's appropriate to study the discontinue? Yes. Yeah, that's the Rage Amendment. Well, again, I, the way this was presented and what I've read in the, the media about this article, I was not prepared to discuss or make my comments about a study. Okay, that's I fine. Just there may be some people here who, who, who have comments or they may be feeling the same way and we'll just take a vote on the Rage Amendment and we'll uh, get back to the main motion. But we have a, uh, an amendment on the floor and that's uh, the purpose of the discussion right now and you can, you can I'll, certainly I'll defer and I'll, I'll recognize defer you Because later. again, my comments are basically on the principle of the discontinuance, not yep. for a study okay. to continue that. All right. In, um, Could I make a uh, change the amendment to for a year, or is that, is that possible? No, I'd like to, before we get there, is there anybody else in the line here who wants to speak to the amendment, to the Rage Amendment? Mr. McNamara. <coughs> Brendan McNamara, 15 Island Path. I'm opposed to the amendment simply because I'm opposed to the article. I don't think a study is going to help, and I'll discuss the article when that comes up. But I am opposed to the amendment. Uh, anyone else in line wishing to speak to the um, Rage Amendment? 
You got to get to the end of the line if you want to speak, Mr. Jones. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I know, but there are people in line, and I'm trying to sort out who is interested in speaking to the amendment. Mr. Page. Yeah. Mr. Page. Nathan Page, 200 Drakeside Road. I'm in favor of the amendment uh, because basically I'm opposed to the, uh, the initial Article 43, and by studying it, we're not discontinuing the trash, is the way I read that article to re be now. That we're going to study whether or not to do it. It doesn't say that basically kills the article, Mr. Moderator, uh, by that adding that language. So if we, if we decide to study it instead of discontinue. Yes, they we're not be. taking action. We're not. De we're not declaring an action at September 15th that we're going to cease the trash pickup. No, we're going to study it and have a report by September 15th. Right. We're not going. If this more, if this amendment passes, we're going to get a report whether or not we should discontinue it. We're not going to take the action of discontinuing. Is that the, my proper? Am I yeah. understanding this correctly? Yeah. yeah. So those people that are against Article 43 should really be for this amendment. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else wishing to be heard on the Rage Amendment? Um, Mr. Jones, anyone before standing before Mr. Jones? All right. I oppose the studying this plan. There's no reason to study this plan. There's reasons to study other things like whether or not we should allow a person who's challenging the moderator to make a position known. I am opposed to this base article. I'm even more fervently opposed to this amendment. If we put this amendment forward to the voters, it's going to look to them as like, okay, another one of our thousand studies, why not? So we're going to waste time going through a study exercise, lots of time and money, and then nothing's going to get done. Yeah. Mary Louise had a similar article in 2010. It was all mucked up, and here she is back again. Let us give her her shot at the voters, who are going to say no, I hope, instead of having her come back again next year with another one of these articles. <laughs> Let's vote this motion down and go forward with the substance of the matter. So I don't see anyone else in the um, line, so let's take Mr. Jones up on his suggestion and have a vote on the Rage Amendment. All those in favor of the Rage Amendment want to see that red highlighted language become a part of Article 43. If you don't want to see that red language become part of Article 43, you will vote no. So, all those in favor of the Rage Amendment, please raise your cards, down cards, all opposed. I declare the Rage Amendment has been defeated. We are back on the main motion, and we're going to get Mr. Rainier's comments on the main motion. So we're dealing with Article 43 as it was submitted as a petition warrant article. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. <coughs> Richard Rainier, 29 Highland Ave. I have notes in front of me because I want to make sure that I am, as they say, perfectly clear in my intention. This year's warrant, as we have seen in the past, contain a number of citizen petitions, for the most part of a positive nature, seeking support for various causes. For example, Article 37 was to supplement funding for the Christmas parade enjoyed both by children and adults of our community. Article 39 was to support a program for the benefit of families of hospitalized veterans. Article 46, the needed repair of the Deacon Park Gristmill Foundation, a building of this town's historical significance. And now comes Article 43, totally negative in its proposal too, and I quote from the articles that I've read in the media, to direct the Board of Selectmen to discontinue all public collection of condominium, commercial, and retail waste, trash, and recycling. End of quote. My comment. Despite the fact that the business community taxes are a hefty portion of revenue to the town, despite the fact that the state returned more than $600,000 to the town generated from the room, rooms and meals tax, and despite the fact that parking revenue generate approximately $500,000 from the influx of tourists, and despite the fact that most condominium owners 
do not have children in the school system and still pay, pay their fair share, what could possibly be the, the motivation promoting this petition that is detrimental to the business community? From what I've read in the media, and I quote again, transfer employees to the highway department where their time could be more productive cleaning up the town. My comment, isn't that exactly what they are doing now? Cleaning trash material from curbside, including leaves, brush, and Christmas trees throughout the town? Quote again, the beach receives pickup sometimes seven days a week during the summer. My comments, that may be true because of generated volume. However, during the off season with businesses closed and many condos vacant, no pickup is required. If you subscribe to the notion that because multiple collections at the beach create a burden for the Department of Public Works, then should we discontinue winter plowing on Lafayette, Winnicott, High and Exeter roads, since those streets require multiple passes more frequently than the shorter streets? Of course not. You know, the words trash and waste are a softer definition of what is in reality garbage. Garbage attracts vermin, seagulls and other birds, stray dogs and cats, and as it decomposes, maggots and flies. An unhealthy and unsightly environment. I live at the beach. That's my neighborhood. But Hampton is also my community. I don't want garbage fermenting, waiting for collection by a multitude of contracted haulers traveling not only the beach, but throughout the town at all hours during the day. ABC company may come in the morning. XYZ company may come in the afternoon. Next door, next door may come in the afternoon. And since the town will continue residential pickup, imagine the quandary and delay of the Packer employees attempting to determine what cot belongs to whom. And to those businesses who choose to bring their waste to the transfer station, be prepared to have someone mind the store while you waste your time, frustrated, queuing up in line with other people waiting to get into the transfer station. We have progressed from material, garbage, being left at curbside in boxes, boxes, uncovered barrels, green recycle bins, and now a sanitary and efficient collection system. This article attempts to micromanage by petition, segregating our communities into three entities, business, condos, owner-occupied residences, and depriving two of them of one of the critical services from the Department of Public Works, similar to the numerous and various functions of the police and fire department. These services fall within the parameters of budgetary expenses for the operation of the town entirely, paid for by all, and must remain available to all. Vote no on Article 43. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rainier. Mr. Lapp. Brian Lapp on 27 I Street. Um, one scare tactic that I've heard is that there are all kinds of businesses waiting to come in and take our trash. Well, because this whole thing was never really thought out, and I applaud the idea of a study, although I, I think it's a way too short and a little late, but who are these companies going to be? We got rid of waste management because they cost us too much money. Now, if I have XYZ company and I he gives me a good price and he finds out I'm the only person on Hampton Beach that's going to get my trash picked up, it's probably going to cost me a lot more money. Um, so I have, I have a big problem with just ending it. As far as landlords not watching their trash, believe me, they watch their trash. Um, my landlord, for instance, is a huge stickler on it. So people do watch what goes into their trash. Um, these landlords now and condominium, everyone else who has to go take their trash to the transfer station, will the DPW police be sitting there checking our trash as we throw it out? Um, considering they want to do it already now, um, are they going to have a full-time person there just to watch what I throw out and go through it? Um, I am totally against this article. 
Um, we've get, spent a lot of time cleaning up and getting the trash where it works well now. Why ruin it and have this lawsuit after lawsuit after lawsuit, well, I'm not a business, well, you are a business, etc., etc. Um, you're in this zone, well, I don't have a business, but you're still in that zone. Are we still not going to pick up your trash? There are just too many flaws with this, and too many businesses are going to suffer throughout the entire town. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lappin. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. My name's Barton McGurl, and I'm residing at 27 Mill Road. And this afternoon, it seems as though, at best, there's a very ambiguous message and at worst, maybe a duplicitous message, because I hear so many people speaking about trying to encourage businesses to come and stay in our community, which I think is admirable. I think in a fiduciary responsibility, it makes perfect sense. Most small businesses ask for very little in return, other than the ability to dictate business. However, on an almost regular basis, we're bombarded by changes. We work very diligently to adapt to an adapting environment. And that's how we maintain viable businesses. And hopefully we are profitable enterprises. That's our goal. However, I think we have to be very, very mindful of the message that we send to individuals and entities who want to come to the community. So we have some articles that are wonderful and very encouraging to the tune of $170,000 in benefit to come to the community to grow. And then other businesses, we say, well, just a second, you're an established business. We haven't determined the size at this point, but you may or may not cross a threshold and this isn't necessarily a tax. We won't call it a tax. However, it impacts businesses. It's an additional expense. So I think we have to be very, very mindful. Most of us in business understand that it's far more cost effective to maintain the clientele we have as opposed to the tremendous expense of trying to bring new clientele, new business in. So why don't we work with the businesses that we have, nurture the environment. We have a wonderful environment. We have an outstanding community. Why don't we try to work within the framework that we have? Please don't make too, too many changes. We try desperately to support the community we reside in. There are many of us who operate small businesses where the lion's share of our revenue is not derived from our locale. And yet, we support the ancillary businesses around our business. So I would please encourage all parties involved to vote against Article 43, and I thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. McGurl. Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon. Lee Lowney, 40 Kings Highway. I wanted to just to say that I am also adamantly opposed to this, um, this article. The, the businesses in this town who operate independently, and they need, they need to have support from us. They don't ask much from us in return. They not have children in our school systems. We're not, we're not supporting them in that way. Contrary to belief, people who own restaurants are not multimillionaires. They do it because they have a passion for food. They don't do it because they make a ton of money. In the food service industry, their profit averages between one and three percent. That is it. To take this burden and allow them and force them to pay an independent contractor to come in and pick up that trash could theoretically throw them right out of business. Do we want our town to have the Applebee's and all the chain restaurants, because they'll be the only ones that can afford to come in here and open up a business. 
if we continue to put the burden on, on the business people. Thank you for taking this into consideration. Thank you, Ms. Lowney. Mr. McNamara. Uh, Brendan McNamara, 15 Island Path. I am opposed to this amendment, or this article, I should say. A um, couple of reasons. One of them is directed at the beach. It's very small. A lot of businesses don't have room to store trash. We have a five-star beach down there. If trash piles up and is not collected daily, we will lose that rating, and our beach could go downhill very quickly, as well as the revenues and the quality of that beach. In addition to that, I take a little offense to the statement that the planning board waivers on different requirements for different developments. As a member of the planning board, since I've been on the board, the four major developments that have come before us, we have required each and every one of them to have their own dumpster. We require them to fence it in so that it's not ugly to the neighbors. We take that into account each and every time. So to say that we waver on these issues isn't fair and it's not accurate. Thank you, and I hope that the whole town opposes this amendment. Thank you, Ms. McNamara. Ms. Preston. Hi, thank you. I, I stand up here to say that this is a terrible article. This, this is not good for the community. It's not good for our town. When I read the article, it says commercial and retail waste. It's almost like you say, well, they can afford to handle their own trash. You know, but lots of little businesses can't handle their trash. You know, it, it would be a burden on them. The businesses in this community do a lot for the community. You know, a little while ago we voted for put in $3,000 to run a Christmas parade. Well, the last Christmas parade was $22,000. And lots of businesses contributed to bring that parade and, ha and have that day for our whole community. We go to businesses all the time when we want something for the schools. We want something for the team to buy uniforms. To Hampton businesses contribute a lot more than, than this. You know, and I think we should be thanking them. They add to our tax base a tremendous amount. I said earlier, the sea catch, $52,000 in taxes. I've never heard Vinny say the schools cost a lot. Vinny opens for three months and he, and he needs to get his trash collected so our beaches look nice. Our tax base down at the beach is enormous. The beach looks better now than it has in decades. You know, to turn around and say, well, let's fool with that. Let's see, see how that will work. It's just not good business. And speaking of Hampton Public Works, you know, if they need another person, let's hire another person. Public Works does an excellent job collecting our trash. They come through that beach in the morning and they're gone. They go zipping up Route 1, those barrels go away, they, they're gone. I just don't think we should fool around with something that we're good at. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Preston. Mr. Rice. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Fred Rice, 15 Heather Lane. I've spoken on some previous articles about fairness in taxation, and there's no bigger example of unfairness in taxation than this article. Right now, you could fairly say that some businesses during some of the year are getting multiple pickups for whatever they pay into the tax base, whereas residents get one pickup a week. And therefore, you can extract that out, as was done by the sponsor of the article, to say that that's not fair, that the residential customers are getting, are they subsidizing the commercial. If you, if this article is enacted, and you take away all, and it very clearly says all, um, collect, trash collection for condominiums, commercial, uh, and retail waste, both trash and recycling, then you're going to have just the opposite, and it's going to swing just as badly in the other direction. You're going to have businesses which pay a substantial portion of the tax burden in this town. They're going to be paying for a service they don't get. 
that's not fair either. And then the businesses will be extra, giving an extra subsidy to the residential. So either way is a bad system. The sponsor said that, that we should have consistency on this and that um, we should treat everybody the, the, the same. The, the burden should be borne the same. We should have fairness and nobody should profit from this. <clears throat> I agree. But this article is not the way to do it. I've been going before the Board of Selectmen on a regular basis every couple of years to try and explain solid waste collection. I've been in that business for 40 years. I've never met a selectman in this town yet that spent five minutes in the trash collection business or in the solid waste business. And by the way, the term is municipal solid waste. It's not garbage. It's not trash. It's not any of those other terms. It's municipal solid waste. It's legally and technically defined as to what it is. So let's get that off the table right now. The way we are doing it, and I'll stress this one more time, we are trying to bury the costs of our refuse collection in the tax base. And we can only find out so much when we do that. We can't tell how much it really costs us, and we can't tell, us, tell how much our real expenses are. In order to be totally fair, we will need to take all of that expense out of the tax base, reduce everybody's taxes proportionately by that small amount, and then set up a system where we bill people for what they absolutely actually throw away. There are some people that don't fill one small size trash can or recycling bin in two weeks yet they are paying the same amount as the house next door that's got five kids and puts out a big can or two every single week. That's not fair either. Because when the town pays for this stuff up at Turnkey, we're paying for it by the pound and by the ton. So we should be being paid for it on the same basis. That's the only way we're going to come out on the right side of the economics on this. That, that ought to be fairly ob obvious but I've not been able to convince the Board of Selectmen that this is obvious in the last 10 to 12 years. We don't pick up condos equally. We pick up some on the side, if they bring it to the side of the road, yeah, because town vehicles are not authorized to go on private property to do this. So if a condo has the ability to put it on their, their corner, yeah, as long as those trucks can stay in the street corner, they can pick it up. But if they can't go on, they can't go into private property. The liability is there, the law is there that, that says we can't do that. Department of Public Works time. A couple of years ago, we spent a significant amount of money to buy three articulated collection vehicles that would reach out, grab the buckets, toss them in the back, and put them back down. Those vehicles are capable of doing twice as much collection as a rear loader with one man who never leaves the cab, never subject to uh, workman's comp, slip and falls, and things like that. That's an efficient way of doing it. And I've mentioned this to the public works director, and I've been told, yeah, we use those all the time. Every single week in my part of town, which is a purely residential area, we have one articulated truck that comes by and grabs the recycling and tosses it in. Ten minutes later, along comes a rear loader with three guys on it in the middle of winter when it's slippery and everything else, and they grab the, the, the blue containers and they haul it across and a truck parks in the middle of the street and they hook it on and they watch it. They stand there like this while the thing uh, loads up. Then they take it back and they sling it across the road and it ends up blocking my driveway half the time. And there's three guys on this truck working at half the speed of the articulated truck. Why in God's name are we not using the three brand new trucks to get the maximum efficiency and using these other two guys on the back of the truck to do other things like repair roads and potholes, which we really need at this time of the year too. So if we're talking about using public works personnel properly, I would think we'd put the older trucks in the back, use them for the backup, and when the, something happens, and it's not likely that something's going to happen to these articulated trucks, they're still pretty darn new. But until they do start to break down, we should be using them, and we should have the other trucks in the background to, to hold that, that cost back. On the issue of fairness, if we have a, a builder, a home builder, a carpenter, a remodeler, he goes into a house, part of the expense of his doing business, he's got to order a, a dumpster, and he's got to bring the dumpster up and park it in the driveway. And all the stuff that's a part of his business, the residue from his business, goes out into the dumpster. 
He has to do that at his expense. By comparison, a restaurant or other business that has a residue from their food waste, in this case, instead of wood, they put it out, and now we're picking it up seven times a week under ta at uh, taxpayer expense. There's an inconsistency there. I'm not saying one's good, bad, or indifferent compared to the other, but there is another case of an inconsistency. And the only way, again, that we're going to remove this is to start with a brand new plan that pulls all of this out of the tax base, sets up a private billing system, a separate billing system. The town can be that collector or somebody else can. But this, this is not the way to do it. Just taking part of the people out of the, the, the equation is going to put another imbalance in in the other direction, and it will be a terrible, terrible economic problem in this town. I urge you strongly to vote against this article. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Rice. Yes, sir. Hi. Hi, Pat Collins, board's head. I will be brief. Thank you. I am totally opposed to this Warren article. I see it as ill thought out, ill planned, Lord knows, ill defined. I don't own a business on the beach. I don't live on the main beach. As a taxpayer, being mindful of the tax base and the benefits that come back to this town due to the business people at the beach, I think we would, we would make a grave mistake if we were ever to implement this. This is a Warren article, a private Warren article. This was not put together by the selectmen, quite the opposite. I would vote this down immediately. I would urge everyone to do the same. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Collins. Robert Coates, 7 Mary Ave. Uh, I just wanted to make one comment on something Mr. Rice pointed out that uh, uh, you mentioned uh, one rail loader and one uh, mechanical arm truck goes in your neighborhood. Well, all three mechanical arm trucks are being used every day. It takes four trucks to get every day's routes done. We only have three mechanical arm trucks. So those three are being used, and then there's one rear loader, and that's why it just happens to be in your neighborhood on that day. So all three mechanical arm trucks are being used every day. Um, we the people of Hampton, New Hampshire, entrust and elect five selectmen to be the voice for us. By electing all of you, we put trust in you and that your majority vote would ultimately be in the best interest of the town of Hampton. Well, there was a vote on the, by the Board of Selectmen on the subject, and majority vote was four opposed and one in favor. The one in favor vote was Mary Louise Wolseley. Shortly after the vote, she decided to start her own petition, which resulted in Article 43. Think about the few thousand condominium owners in town for a minute. Lots of them live, live in town, live in town year-round for decades, just the same as a homeowner. You know, some, some condominiums have dumpsters for trash and they only put out recycling toters because they want to do the right thing and not throw the recycling in the dumpster. But as a year-round as a year -round residential property owner, they shouldn't be treated any differently, any differently than a homeowner. Uh, you know, the Hampton Beach Village District Commissioner, Bob Ladd, noted that the word commercial could take multiple litigations in court he said to define the word. Um, he mentioned that maybe even landlords could be considered commercial. So, you know, how many thousands of people would that affect? So every, to every, everybody that rents in the town of Hampton could have their trash and recyclable services just go away. You know, so, um, If, if Article 43 passes, you know, it's, it, it wouldn't be a good thing, and it would be not a good thing for a lot of people in town. Uh, you know, when the town started picking up recycling a few years back, on the one of the facts was it was cheaper for the town to do it than it, you know, than it was for a private company, waste management, to do it. Well, this article is sending the message to thousands of businesses and residents that 
you know, may have to go hire their own private company, which could possibly be hundreds of dollars a month or more for their pickup. It just seems like every time there's been changes in, there's been changes in service over the years to trash, it's always been changes that take away. You know, when does it stop, you know? Hampton is far, far ahead of most towns when it comes to collecting trash and recycling. As, as an example, town, town of Seabrook don't even have commingled recycling, so they spend lots of time at every stop outside of the trucks separa separating the recycling. They also pick up loose bags of trash on the ground. And even our own, I was in Concord, New Hampshire last week, even our own state capital pick up bags of trash on the ground. So we're years ahead of most towns and cities in New Hampshire. And I say, you know, keep going forward. Why, why go backwards? You know? So I urge everybody to vote no on 43. Thank you, sir. So we're nearing an hour. We're coming in on an hour. So here's our plan. We're going to end with Ms. Kaiser. I'm going to go back to the proponent if the proponent has any uh, final comment. Then we're going to take a vote as to whether we want any more discussion. So we're going to go through the people who are lined up here, ending with Ms. Kaiser, back to Ms. Woolsey if she has any comment, and then to a vote if you want further discussion. Mr. Griffin. Good afternoon. Um, I would just like, I've already had plenty to say about this for the last nine years, um, <clears throat> but it's basically uh, a fairness issue to me. If it's been done the way that it's been done for so long, how can you possibly, you know, why would you stop it? You're just going to disenfranchise all the people that have been had something taken away from them, and I can tell you that when you're in business and you take something away from an employee, like look, take, give a, take a, 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 a uh, a raise away from an employee, you might as well fire them because it just isn't going to, they're never going to be happy. And that's what's going to happen with the people that have thought they've paid and had this included in their taxes for so long. Nothing's going to make them happy. Uh, you're, so we've done it this way and it seemed to work out well. Uh, I've been gone for this last year and it's amazing to me that this is still being talked about. To me, this is a major waste of time. It's a major morale, uh, a detriment to the morale of the people that work in Hampton, everyone from the people that pick up the trash to the people that, uh, the department heads. Everyone, th there's, I'm sure, more money being wasted by uh, productivity and morale, uh, waste to these people that are being paid because they're not being able to do their jobs. This is complete micromanaging. And it's, I just can't believe that, as far as I'm concerned, this is a new low in Hampton politics. For somebody that's on the board, if you didn't want to go along with the board, you should have just stayed a private citizen because uh, you, when you're a part of a board, you should go along with what the board votes for. To me, this is totally wrong. And I myself, I have a place at the beach. I live there. Uh, I could rent a lot of my property and I could make a lot more money, but I don't want to be bothered by having tenants or whatever else. So uh, that's my home. I have, I never have in the last uh, ever since they've been having these new barrels, I've never put out more than one barrel and uh, for my trash and one barrel for my recycling. And I I'm not even sure how this would affect me, but I can tell you that there are many people, it's going to be, the problem is going to continue and continue and you're going to be fighting, you're going to have, I have a feeling the reason the other four selectmen voted against it, because they know that people have been promised to have their trash picked up, and this is going to end up in court over and over and over again. So I urge you to be against this proposal. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Griffin. Ms. Latimer. Janine Latimer. This is one of the shortest Warren articles we have, yet probably the most sweeping. And I would start out by saying this. 
you are looking to discontinue all public collection of condominium, commercial, and retail waste, first of all, you have condominiums that have documentation that say otherwise, and that needs to be considered. That's one issue. Going into the next one, commercial, as some people have stated, what are you going to consider commercial? There is no definition there. And finally, I guess the retail waste kind of belongs with the commercial end. So what I have is not a clearly defined article here. On top of that, when we talk about our congested areas, particularly the beach, whose trash is it anyway? Is it each homeowner's trash down there? Is it each business owner's? Because I don't know about you, I take my wrapper from one business and I drop it off in a can halfway down the beach. So when you start saying that you're going to bill individual people for what they have, how are you going to determine whose trash is what? You're going to start trash wars, neighbor against neighbor. We're unique. We have to excuse the expression, but suck it up that we're unique. We have unique businesses that have been put together over a long period of time with no room for dumpsters or anything else. That creates strategic problems. A broad sweeping article like this, because it might feel good to think that we're going to save money, we'll just spend it in legal costs down the road, um, doesn't do it. It's, it's taking a feeling on something and, and Mary Louise, I gotta say, you didn't like the way the board voted with you, but the board already spoke. But you have the right to put this out there, and I guess I have the right to stand here and say, I don't think it has a prayer in hell and working. It might pass, but it won't work. And to not take any more time, because I think everybody has already said what needs to be said, I'll just be redundant, I would like to do one thing. Even if this article passes, I hope no one is naive enough to think that we can fix all this and transition this by that date. I'm hoping that this article will be hugely defeated, brought back to the drawing board, board talked about, but not in a way to eliminate the commercial trash. I wholly believe, and I'll, I'll, I'll put this in as, as a little insight, I work for a broadliner, and for anybody who's in the food business down the beach, you know how many broadliners come in with their enormous trucks every day. And now you add to that every company that everybody has coming in. And oh, business wasn't that great. It rained for a couple of months, so I got to cut costs, so I won't have every day pickup. I think maybe I'll go to two, three times a week at best. How are you going to monitor that? How are we ever going to know even whose barrel is whose barrel down there, or cart? It's impossible to monitor this effectively unless you're going to build an administration that's going to cost you the money that you saved from picking up the commercial trash. Has anybody thought about that one? We have some, Fred Rice brings some great things to the drawing board, but you know what? That's going to cost money. It all costs money. And the thing is, in the end, what is best for everybody? And that includes people who even aren't on the beach. It's all over town. That being said, I don't like the date of September 15th, 2014. I don't think that's workable, even should this article pass. So I would like to propose an amendment that says no sooner than September 15th, 2016. So, as you know, I need it in writing. Okay. So, I can't entertain it unless you fill out that, uh, that. that form.
So Ms. Latimer is proposing an amendment that um, affects the implementation date if the article were to be passed, and the amendment is no sooner than September 15, 2016, as shown in red. Is there a second to Ms. Latimer's, um, Mr. Kravitz, is second uh, Ms. Latimer's amendment? So we've got the flavor of the amendment from Ms. Latimer on why she is proposing it. I'm going to ask you to vote on the amendment at this time. All those in favor of the Latimer amendment, uh, you would raise your voter card. Down cards. All opposed. I'm going to take a vote. Um, so I'm going to ask you to do this again, and Mr. Mosier and Mr. Page, if you could come down to the front. So we're going to be voting again on the Latimer Amendment, which is changing the implementation date of the proposed article from September 15, 2014 to no sooner than September 15, 2016. If you're in favor of the Latimer Amendment, please raise your voter card and keep them high until the gentleman in your section has had an opportunity to count. down cards. All those opposed to the Latimer Amendment, please raise your voter cards. So the Latimer Amendment has passed 34 to 23. So I have Mr. Jones and Ms. Kaiser to speak to the article as it is amended, and then I'm going to the proponent, and we'll go out to the audience to see if we need discussion beyond those three individuals. So it is sooner, not later. All right. I knew I'd get up here sooner or later. Anyway, uh, we talk a lot about fair, fairness, Mary Louise. Yes, sir. I think we need to first consult the Constitution in New Hampshire. Yeah. I would suggest that you, you consider Article 12. It speaks about equal taxation and equal protection of, of services from the town. Yeah. I think that this is a blatant to, to segregate portions of our community, one from the other. It's clearly dividing the town. This is not good governance. Whether you, whether you remember the Board of Selectmen or a legislator in this audience. I ask all of you, my fellow legislators, to just vote no on this, and I ask the moderator, Mr. Moderator, is there a process by which the town meeting can say on the ballot that this is not recommended by town meeting? No, we, we've been is, through... Is there a process for that? No. Okay, no. thank you. We ought to consider, as legislative body, a means of making that happen in the future for situations like this. I thank you, Mary Louise. I do believe that you brought this forth in good faith. But I think you can clearly see 
that is dividing the town. And no matter what we do, dividing a town in such a fashion is not going to produce a good result. And when you consult Article 12 of the Constitution, I'll sure, I'm sure you'll agree that this, this, this particular Warren article is not consistent with our Constitution, which I'm sure you wish to be consistent with. I know I am. Please, everyone, vote no. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Ms. Kaiser. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Ann Kaiser, 7 Palmer Street. I waited to come up and speak because I thought somebody would surely point out something that has not been pointed out but has been mentioned in talking about this article, and that is the town budget. And it's interesting that line 4323, which is solid waste collection, municipal solid waste, shows the actual expenditures in 2012 were $580,315. However, the line for the actual in 2013 shows that it dropped down to $529,300. Then on the next page, this is under line 4324, solid waste disposal. In 2012, the tipping fees were $548,611. They only dropped a little in 2013. But the waste hauling in 2012 was 140,830 and in 2013 it was 123,623. So that was a drop. So I just wanted to point that out and I'm amazed that nobody did pick up on this. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Geiser. I'm going to go back to the proponent to see if she has any comments, and then we're going to see if we're done on this article. Ms. Woolsey. Yes. I have been around for a long time, and much that I hear is talk, 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 and no action. Stall, stall, stall. This issue of the solid waste has been a thorn in everybody's side for years. And what I hear tonight from the small segment of the public that's represented is the beach, the beach, the beach, the beach. I am talking the entire town. And I am talking the entire town where half of the business community is subsidizing the other half of the business community. Just because we've been banging our heads on the wall for years doesn't mean we have to continue. We no longer live in caves. We no longer go into the salt marshes to gather hay. We do not drive Model Ts. The time has come to resolve an issue which has truly been a thorn in the side and divisive issue in this community. The reason Mrs. Kaiser pointed out about the expenses, our expenses for tipping and transporting waste is because of the recycling program, because our solid waste to dump a turnkey is going down. We are not, however, generating uh, income from the recyclables, but I hope we will in the future. I think it's only fair to the public, and the public is not completely represented here. This is a fraction, fraction of the voters that live in this town. Give the chance to the public to vote up or down. Commercial is anything that derives revenue. If you have an apartment house and you're charging people for their apartments, which I'm sure you are doing, you're making money. If you have a retail store, you're making money. If you're not making money, you won't be in business. And then, of course, you have the really big enterprises that are all over town, including the Galley Hatch and many of the other entities. It's time for the public to make, take a stand and say it's say and get it over with and give some direction so that we can move forward instead of going after this time and time and again and picking the scab and everybody's dissatisfied. And, and it's just, uh, I think it's something that we need to resolve and just get it over with, let the public vote fairly. Thank you, Ms. Wolsey. All right, we've gone at this for an hour, gone at this for an hour, so my question to the body is whether um, uh, you're ready to close out discussion on Article um, 43. All those in favor of ending discussion on Article 43, raise your voter cards, down cards, all those opposed. Thank you. Um, I'll entertain